Welcome to 15 Minute Fundamentals, where we break down crypto projects and learn about the drivers behind the data you see on our charts. Today, I'm joined by Jamie from Perpetual Protocol, an on-chain perpetual futures exchange. Hey, Jamie, welcome to 15 Minute Fundamentals. It is great to have you on. Hey, it's great to be here. Thanks for having me. Could you give a quick intro to Perpetual Protocol before we dive into the details behind it? Yeah, sure. So Perpetual Protocol is an open source decentralized exchange for perpetual swaps. So we're fully on chain and we're built on the layer two solution Optimism. So since launching this latest version around uh, 10 months ago, trading volume has totaled more than $13.2 billion. And I think the easiest way I explain it to people is that um, you can think of purpose a bit like Uniswap V3, but it allows you to obtain leverage as well. And uh, actually Uniswap V3 is used under the hood. So Perpetual Protocol is the most composable decentralized exchange and allowing other projects and protocols to easily integrate with us. So for traders, traders and LPs, there are 17 different crypto markets at the moment to choose from. So everything is margined and settled in USDC stablecoin. So we're talking about linear derivatives here. Um, but while you can use USDC as collateral, you can also use Ethereum, wrapped Ethereum, uh, the FRAX stablecoin, and the OP token as well. As the current version of Perpetual is V2, can you just give us like a quick uh, history lesson on what the main updates were that you introduced with the transition from V1 to V2? Yeah, so as I mentioned before, um, V2 we actually built on top of Uniswap V3. So it introduces the concept of concentrated liquidity. So LPs can choose, choose a range and uh, supply liquidity in that range to um, boost boost the fee revenue. And then the other, the other main update is you, we introduced makers in version two. So LPs, they can provide liquidity with leverage and untrading fees. And we also have the liquidity mining programs to incentivize people to become LPs. And then the other, the other main update is that um, the first version was built on XDAI, but V2 is actually built on Optimism. So that allows for better scalability, uh, much cheaper gas fees, so fast confirmation. So on XDAI, it was like around three to five seconds per block, but with Optimism, it's a lot faster. And, you know, as an optimistic roll-up solution, actually inherits the security of Ethereum's main chain. Yeah. And I think most of our listeners will be familiar with uh, Uniswap's automated market maker model. And as you're building on top of that, you have something similar in place. But looking at your site, people will come across the term virtual automated market maker. So could you just explain what the main differences are between these two models and how it works? Sure. So on an AM model like, you know, Swiss Shop, uh, Uniswap, you're trading real assets, but with a VAM, you're actually trading derivatives in the form of virtual tokens. So these are minted by the, the clearing out smart contract. So how it works is as follows. So you just put up some collateral, which is locked into a vault. And according to the rules of the protocol, it allows you to mint up to 10 times the amount of virtual tokens. So if you deposit $1,000 in uh, USDC, you can, you can trade with up to $10,000 USD value. So for example, if you wanted to long Ethereum, you'd put up some collateral and then it gets locked in the vault. And then you can buy or sell up to $10,000 worth of virtual ETH through swapping in a Uniswap pool. And uh, basically, these virtual tokens represent your positions. Got it. And then on to financials. Could you walk us through your business model so that we understand who pays fees for what and how these fees are split between supply side participants and the protocol? You can think of it just like a, an exchange model, the, the business model. So, you know, traders pay trading fees to open or close positions. And uh, at the moment, 80% of the fees go to, to all of the LPs and 20% uh, goes to the insurance fund. But then eventually we'll We'll be changing it so that um, LPs will continue to get 8%, but then 10% um, will go to the treasury and 10% will go to VE perp holders. So uh, we recently implemented like a VE tokenomics model. So yeah, that'll be rolling out um, within the next like half a year or so. Okay, great to hear. So so we'll have the 10% of total fees paid essentially would be distributed to token holders through the VE perp uh, tokenomics. Uh, would be great to hear a, like a quick overview of what what that is. If you're familiar with Curve or, or Frax, you, you may know already a bit, a bit about the V tokenomic model, but in a nutshell, it basically means that you, you lock up your tokens for a certain amount of time. So it's not just dependent on the amount of tokens you lock, but also how long you lock them for. So it kind of makes it more, more of like a level, level playing field, um, incentivizing token holders to be aligned with uh, the protocol itself. So yeah, if you if you lock perp, you can you can receive the EPUP. And uh, that's actually live now, but um, the, the fee sharing is, is like a, is coming at a later date. Cool. Exciting. What would you say are the main drivers and challenges related to your growth right now? Okay. Yeah. So I'll start with the growth drivers. So because, because it's built on Uniswap V3, you know, people are very, very familiar with that if you're, if you're a power DeFi user and um, we're one of the most used protocols on Optimism as well. So that's been a major growth driver for us. 
And, uh, you know, over 50% of the volume on Uniswap V3 on Optimism is actually for the V token pairs. And then some other growth drivers, um, you know, in the past year, have launched quite a lot of new markets that people want to trade. So some of the really successful ones have been ApeCoin, Aave, Binance's uh, BNB and Flow. So um, the launch of new markets has really driven a lot of growth. And then another another growth driver has been, you know, the OP airdrop. That's been like a big topic in recent months, right? And uh, that's generated a lot of interest in the protocols on optimism. And um, the accompanying um, OP summer incentives as well have driven a lot of growth, especially in liquidity for uh, Aave, BNB, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Matic and Sol. So we've seen a massive uptick in liquidity provided for those pairs. And then finally, um, the EVM compat- compatibility also makes it easier to onboard users because optimism is like pretty much the same as using something on, on mainnet. And as well, the, the leverage for LP helps people to amplify their returns. So yeah, they're, they're the main growth, growth drivers, I think. And then for the challenges, I would say um, derivatives market is very competitive. So there are a lot of different and interesting protocols out there, a lot of different approaches being taken. So the competitiveness is, is a challenge, but and also um, becoming like similar to centralized exchanges, like offering the same functionality or, or better functionality as well is quite, but at the same time, being decentralized as possible so that, that's a major challenge so and then finally i'd say you know bringing users to l2s and into like the decentralized landscape as well uh you know some people might be wondering like well why should i trade on a decentralized exchange they may not they may not know like the benefits or why why they need such product as well so educating users as well i think is part of that challenge for sure and on the competitive landscape could you describe what perps core value prop or differentiator is to other players in this field the markets that we list them, some of them are like long tail assets, so they're not available on on other de- derivatives dexes. So that's one of the main differentiators. But also, um, as I mentioned before, perpetual protocol is the leading perpetual swaps exchange on Optimism. So that's one of our main focuses, like advancing the growth and bringing more users to Optimism as well. But I'd say um, the main value proposition as well is composability. So you know, other projects can build on top of us. You know, there's like it's almost a hundred uh, different protocols actually using up as well so uh, whether they're building on top or actually using the product to like hedge or or make trades and then another differentiator i would say is um the multi-collateral feature which is released uh, a few months ago so we started with ethereum so we introduced ethereum as another collateral type that you can use to trade so people don't have to sell their ethereum so they can keep exposure to the asset while also trading or providing liquidity but as well as ethereum you know as i mentioned earlier there's frax and op as well and then some potential additions later down the line could be um, wrapped Bitcoin or staked ETH and LP positions. But, you know, these aren't confirmed at present, but it depends on the liquidity on optimism to add new collateral types. But we're confident we'll see that soon. Yeah. And now that you mentioned interoperability, I just wanted to ask what kind of role official partnerships play in your growth strategy, because I, I know that um, you're permissionlessly built on top of Uniswap v3, and you've been very clear that there is no partnership in place there. Yeah, exactly. And then you also provide the platform for protocols to permissionlessly come build on top of Perp. So, is there any official partnership making going on in addition to these? What we're aiming to do with Perp Protocol is that we want it to be like a base layer for interesting applications, so users will be interacting with Perp without even knowing it. So that's the goal. So we want perpetual protocol to be like the money DeFi Lego for on-chain derivatives and you know we have a bunch of different partners building on top and that way we can get more users and grow the protocol through these integrations and then a two-part question first what is the perp token and its role I know we talked a bit about VE perp but then second how are you utilizing token incentives in general I'll start off with a bit of background so um perp started off as a simple governance and like staking token so you can stake it on a mainnet to earn more perp or acquire tokens through, or you can also acquire tokens through the various reward programs such as liquidity mining. But yeah, yeah, as I mentioned earlier, the tokenomic model is currently being overhauled. So this is in progress at the moment, but not completed yet with a VE token model. So similar to Perv or Frax. So the eventual plan is to direct 10% of the trading fees to VE perp token holders. So what they can do is they lock up perp and they receive VE perp. But in the old staking model, you have to stake more perp to get a greater share of the rewards while with the VE perp, it depends on how long you lock for, not just the amount. So that brings a better alignment between the incentives for token holders and the protocol itself. And then, yeah, for the token incentives at the moment, there, there's there's quite a few um, that are currently u- utilizing. So one of them we call a pool party. So this is our OP summer incentive. So that's where liquidity providers can earn OP and perp tokens every week, proportional to the volume they facilitate. Each market has a different allocation. So for the ETH market, we have 27,000 OP and perp per week. So 
you know, that's like $31,000 in um, OP tokens and $16,000 in PERP tokens each week. And then for other markets, we have 5,000 5, of each token. And then for some other markets, we have 3,000 for each token per week. And then if I uh, move on to the other incentive, uh, token incentive, it's, um, late, it's called Lazy River. So basically um, what happens here is that we're kind of building up to the USDC fee distribution. So what, we, what we're doing is we're calculating 10% of the trading fees, but then we're going to um, pay it out in PERP. So when people lock in lock into VE perp, they'll receive perp every week, and uh, yeah, so that's like kind of building up to the USDC fee distribution. And the longer you lock, and the more you lock, the the higher your rewards are. Other than pool party and lazy river, there are two other token incentives that we, that we're currently um, implementing. So one is the referral program. So you know, if you ever trade on an exchange, you'll notice that most of them have like a referral program. So traders can earn rebates when other people use their referral code. And the referred traders also get rebates each week. So the rewards from this program actually paid out in uh, VE Perp. And then finally, we have um, the Perp Evangelists, which are like our ambassadors. So anyone can join and, you know, they don't have to commit to a full-time a full time role. But if they want to work like part-time and help us out building out our community or helping out in any other way, they can do. And um, basically, we utilize um, Coordinate and Dwork to assign tasks and also reward their contributions uh, with perp tokens, perp tokens, sorry, based on the impact that they have. Got it. So driving lots of activity via different incentive mechanisms. So sounds good. Now on, on that activity, who are the current users of perp at the moment? I suppose we have, we can group users into three main categories. So we have traders, we have LPs and we have builders. So for traders, um, you know, this is made up of retail traders and programmatic traders. So it's about 50-50. Um, between those, uh, so 50% of trading through the UI and then the other half of trading programmatically for, due to the nature of composability. So we can open up the door for programmers to build the trading tra strategies and most of the volume is actually done through programmatic traders. And uh, for, for liquidity providers, so over 99% of the liquidity provided on the platform is actually by external parties. So this is up from around 57% at the start of the year. And uh, actually the number of unique LPs has grown five times compared to the beginning of the year as well. And then for builders, so more and more projects are building on PERP. We've probably given out the highest amount uh, in grants out of any other protocol. So if you check out the ecosystem page on our website, you can see the products, products that are currently live. So most of these are like basis trading um, strategies that people can use, uh, vaults that they can deposit into and earn the return. But also we have, um, we have a partner called Brahma. So they have a vault where you can, um, they take, they check, they take trades using Perpetual Protocol and they actually utilize uh, Curve and Convex to earn a yield. And from that yield, they they use um, they use that to, to trade on Perp and also Lyra. Got it. And and being fully decentralized, uh, do you experience lots of organic community contributions to your code base or any other aspects of Perp's business? Yeah, so we actually have quite a thriving community. So like I mentioned before, we have a lot of people building cool stuff on top of uh, Perp V2. Also, we've got a lot of feedback from like power users who have written bots and uh, they even run some funds as well. So they provide a lot of good feedback on our product. Some of them have even found bugs and uh, become white hats and later they join our ambassador program, which is known as uh, the Evangelist program. So um, they have some pretty important contributions that play an important role in uh, building out our product and also our community. Great to hear. Always love a thriving community. And finally, what's next for Perp? Uh, what can we expect to see over the coming months? Okay, yeah. So um, we're working closely with some partners who are building um, building out some LP vaults. So they're they're making it easier to become a profitable maker. So you know, if you if you're familiar with like a uh, Uniswap V3, you know, it's quite sometimes it can be quite hard to make money and be profitable as a maker. Helping ILPs to become profitable is our main focus because you know. The liquidity needs to be there for to, to drive traders to, to our platform. And then the, the other main thing that's next for PERP is um, continuing with the VE PERP rollout. So it's already started with the referral rewards. The, they paid they paid out in VE PERP and they previously were paid out in PERP tokens. But then following that, we launched Lazy River. So that's a precursor to the USDC fee distribution. So that's a big focus for us. So once the fee switch is activated, you know, 10% of the trading fees will be shared with fee PERP holders once the insurance fund reaches a certain threshold. And then the other thing is um, looking at incentivizing liquidity with um, fee PERP rewards instead of PERP rewards as well. And um, yeah, as I mentioned before, more collateral types. So making it easier for anyone to, to trade or provide liquidity on perp no matter what what tokens they hold so these could be um wrapped bitcoin or staked ETH as well but i think um the next asset actually for multi-collateral will actually be the perp token itself and then yeah apart from that we're always looking for ways to improve um the, the ui and ux of our platform and um, getting feedback from people uh 
getting feedback from our users and um, yeah, just improving the product. Great to hear. Lots of cool stuff coming up and uh, thank you so much for this great overview of Perk. I really appreciate it, Jamie. Yeah, no worries. Thanks for having me on. It was great to be here.